just from a, a grassroots sales perspective, you know, when you're obviously we're going to talk about the bulk of the Brenner, but when you have customers that, that call in, I mean, obviously there's just general questions you ask. What are they hauling? Where are they hauling? And a lot, surprisingly, how many don't know what they're hauling. So sometimes that's good if they have to get an MSDS sheet to be specific. And again, lean on us when it when uh, those questions come up because obviously it's very specific to where it goes. Um, just because a customer calls up and says he wants a chemical chart doesn't mean that's really what he needs. Um, just give you an example now. The bulk, the bulk line, it's our plant in Mexico. I don't know how much you, you guys know about it. It's more of our fleet type trailer, uh, higher volume, primarily uh, deep drop fertilizer trailers or chemical trailers. Now we can do highly specialized trailers. We have in the past, and it's kind of nice. I kind of call it a, a kind of a flex plant. Brenner can't do it. We can build it down there. All the engineering comes from. Wisconsin, Fond du Lac. So there's, it's just strictly a manufacturing plant down there. So anything that, the same design that we would build up at Brenner and Fond du Lac will be built down in Mexico. So when customers ask that question, it's just a, it's just another option for a production plant that we use just for overflow and more standard type stuff. So um, primarily most of the stuff that we build, again, is more standard type units. Now this, this is a bulk fertilizer trailer. It's a 304 stainless. Um, High volume, simple product. It's a non-code type product. Uh, most of them are going to be, and most of the fertilizer trailers you see will be a deep drop. This is a 30 inch deep drop trailer, exposed ring. Everything's done in house. Um, when you think about, I mean, obviously all the quality from our trailers, whether it's Brenner or Bulk, comes from the stainless straight in, whether it's up at our plant there in Mexico. We have very strict guidelines for the stainless that we actually bring in, not only the surface finish, but actually the uh, thickness as well, because that's key to whatever trailer it is. Once it actually passes that stage, we clear coat or put a protective tape on the, on the material itself. Um, all of our stainless that we do produce, whether it's 304 or 316, is, and you'll see an L after it's 316L or 304L, means low carbon. So that's a standard with, within, our, within our product line. The main reason you do that is once when you weld two pieces of stainless together, the carbon has a, a tendency to leach out the chromium that's in the stainless, and a lot of that that's, it gives its protective corrosive ability. So we always do a low carbon uh, type, type material. Once it goes after the material gets uh, approved and we put a plastic tape on it, the first we do a, a, an automated welder, a uh, computer welder. It's gas back, and what that does is it limits the amount of, actually they call it heat affected zone. Some materials, when you, when you weld it, obviously there's going to be some areas on both sides of that weld. When we put that gas behind it, it limits that. Again, that's the heat affected zone is the first place you're going to see a weakness. First thing you're going to see a pit on or whatever it is in the chemical in, in the chemical business. So you want it, it's, it's structural integrity and longevity of the trailer. And actually after we do the, the single weld, we actually grind it down to whatever finish the customer wants depending on the product. W0 is pretty much nothing, W5 is pretty much brown flush. And that'll depend on the product that you're hauling. The more weld you have there, the more product it's going to catch, more possibility for corrosion and whatnot. And obviously, there's a cost to that, but the smoother you have the weld, the better off you are for different types of products. Usually, you see more corrosive products have a smoother finish. These type of trailers fertilize where it's not a corrosive material. They'll just do it as a regular W0 just because you're not worried about it kind of getting into the weld itself. So, once they do that, most of our sheets, and you'll notice if you come to the side, when we bring our material in, we can get up to 25 foot sheets. Our welder is up to 25 feet long, so you'll notice there's usually only one certain branchal seam. We want to limit the amount of weld that you're going to have in the trailer. So we'll have one seam. We have a roller that can do 25 feet. Um, and that just kind of is our standard, whether it's in Wisconsin or, or in Mexico. The heads themselves as well are done with a single blank. You know, punch out the blank. It's a butt weld there, a butt weld at the center seam. And that's the strongest weld that you can have. And that's the way we do all of them, whether it's a deep drop, straight, straight elliptical. You'll notice though on, on the deeper drop, which is a 30 inch drop, it's not abnormal to have, we do put an extra bang here at the very bottom half just for strength. You'll only see that on, on the deep drop double conicals. Most of them don't have that, they don't need it, but the deeper drop we do just for added support. And also well, you notice too, above there, some of the deeper drop, we put channel stickers on each side. Again, that's just to support the weight. This is a 5,600 gallon trailer, so the product's pretty dense and heavy, so you want it for support. Um, multiple different variations on the, on the walkway design. This is more of a standard. We'll do a three o'clock walkway. We can do a collapsible type walkway. Um, all depends on where the customer is going and what, it, what they need to have. The rings in themselves as well, 
We actually roll all the rings, C channel rings in house, and we put the closures, and you'll notice on the other side they kind of alternate all the way down the trailer again, offset that possible harmonic balance. It's a man manipulated type weld. It reduces uh, the barrel to uh, ring fatigue that you might have, so it's always consistent all the way down. Um, and there's manipulator, manipulator, automatic manipulator, manipulator weld. It's a welding machine that kind of barrel will spin while they're going both sides of the ring, so it's consistent. It's a faster welding process as well. Um, when you get to the back, towards the suspension, now this is the same suspension that we'll use on all of our trailers. It's our standard tandem axle suspension. This is a joint venture we did with Hendrickson. Um, this is our AANT, our narrow tower suspension. We took weight out of it, probably close to 80 to 100 pounds. Um, depending on the axle configuration, but we didn't take out any of the strength. So it's, and you, if you come to the back here, you can see how wide open it is. So guys, you don't need it in this application because it's a deep drop, but it's nice wide open. You can see everything, get to everything, shocks, check slack adjusters. And if it was like a straight round, you could use, do a pump off line and whatnot on the inside. So a big variation. We do standard LED lights, a plug and play system all the way through. Um, I think what else as far as there's a multi multiple different options on axles and suspensions and wheels and whatnot. Disc brakes to drum brakes to uh, centrifuge drums. Um, this is a, uh, a standard track, a 71 and a half inch track. You can do up to 77 and a half inch track, which is a wider track design, which will keep you, out, keep you under the 102 wide, but it gives you more stability, more roll stability. Um, all of our tandem axle units will have uh, the Meritor RS, RSS roll stability system as a standard. Um, and that system actually just it goes off the wheel spin. It's off the ABS. It, it senses one wheel is up in the air and it's spinning faster. It'll five brakes to the other side automatically. Completely separate from the truck and the driver. He has no control over it. So that's, that's standard on all our units. Have you ever had an application where this might be like in the Northwest or this would be a uh, pinnel plate if we had a, a rear hitch and a pinnel? That application, they don't allow us to have our roll stability just, just on a tandem axle or with a transport. Leave the puff, they don't allow it. But standard to 96 Y overall then. Yeah, yeah. And you can see just the way this trailer's built, you can see how it's kind of because of the, just because of the girth and the size of it, the capacity with the deep drop, it kind of goes out smaller on the ends. It's just because the product's very viscous. So. This particular trailer actually has baffles on the inside. You can do with or without baffles. You can kind of see where the baffles are placed on the inside. And that's just basically to help the surging and the sloshing that you may or may not get when it's half full, partially full, depending on the weight of the product that they have. Um, and everything's done for a reason on the trailer. Everything for, I mean, and you'll notice here on stainless trailers, you won't notice it as much on this trailer, but See how the welds are always offset? Even on our, it's an exposed ring straight round. The stainless trailers, they never have it going. That's our, our opinion, they have it going straight there. You want to offset any of those strengths or possible points of weakness. So we offset that, kind of like we do with the rings back and forth. Even on the, uh, on the upper framing too, back here, you can tell all these welds in the upper frame. We've learned over the years, as we've been doing it over 100, we learned stuff along the way. They do a stitch weld all the way across here. Again, the trailer does flex and move. There's a reason for it. There's a reason for this upper coupler, or this upper frame right here, not touching the barrel again, so it can flex. Exactly. You don't know how much the trailer's flexing if you're going down the road, but there's, even on the inside of the frame rails too, if you look at the gussets, there's back welds and stitch welds that they put that through the finite so element. Stitch weld allows for more flex. Yeah, gives it more flexibility. They've done some in the past, I know, up to the top and it hasn't. It just, it doesn't work, doesn't allow it to flex, something's gonna break. And of course, you know, the reason they cut these out is just strictly for weight. It's not needed for, for the structural integrity of the trailer itself. So, and again, we've done most of the trailers, all the trailers that we build at Bulk will be out of 304 stainless. We do also do 201 stainless, which is comparable to 304, um, but they're more or less interchangeable. So. <laughs> Questions? This is more or less a very kind of. Can you go over about the MSD sheets and how we how we should proceed when we get to a customer and they ask us if we want to go directly to you each time? Yeah. 
the MSDS sheet is this material safety data sheet. Just ask them for it. Whoever they're hauling for, they should be able to produce it. So when they get it, you can send it to us and it'll tell you the chemical makeup of the trailer or the, of the material, specific gravity, what it's compatible with. And it's something that you guys should have on site, but you don't, you don't run into it a lot. Every product, every product out there, when somebody calls up and says, I want to haul this product, there's a uh, hazard, hazardous material book, guideline book. And that is going to refer to a UN number, which refers to the product. And that will tell you what you can and cannot use under exemption and whatnot. So there's a reason why every product has to be hauled a certain. And it'll tell you in there, it's compatible with lumen, it's not compatible with stainless, it's got to be lined. So that's kind of our Bible to it. Majority of the customers will know what they're asking for, but a lot of them don't. A lot of them say it's a new haul. And just start out asking for the MSDS sheet, and then we can kind of help guide through what you, where you need to go. That's just my question. I was wondering if there was a certain pH or some point of the atoms that you could or could not hold in this one. Yeah, and I'll tell you, it's based, okay. based on the product. But it, and the material has this book, it's like 300 pages long, they're not cheap, but it's good to have one on site. I think there's an online version as well. It's not rare. I mean, I don't refer to it very often. If you, even when I do, if it's a product that I don't know, I still ask engineering because they may have seen it and say, yeah, you got to use this, this has rubber, rubber line or whatnot. But it's kind of the Bible for what we're going to haul in the trailer. So it does help. It does help. Why should I buy or this instead of a renter? You know, it, well, the way we portray it is it's just a different price point. Um, That's what I've, price point, a, freight, and location. It's and the same spec. It's the same design, same engineering. I mean, you'll see the same attributes here as you would at a Brenner. Brent, the Brenner facility is designed maybe for more specialized type units. Um, but if we built a, if we built a fertilizer trailer at, at Fond du Lac, at Brenner plant, it looks just the same as this. So there's that's, that's the main difference, just a little bit of a price point. It gives us flex too, like I said, on main factory side. One's farther out, this one's closer up, this will you know, enable them to get it faster. So, but, and we've changed it over the years when we first took over both because they had different frames and different everything else, but we put it all in one row now. So. Why should I buy this instead of a puller? Uh, who has a um, Our design and our price point is probably the most competitive out there for these. If you weight on this, about 9,500 pounds, and that's pretty lightweight for a, for a fertilizer trailer. So, very comparable. I mean, a fertilizer trailer, it's non code, there's not that much there, but based on the volume of what we see, uh, basic three year warranty structurally, that's better than most in the industry. So, we just uh, we build a lot of them. I've not had, uh, I've never had an issue with them. No, it, it's really a, and we can do more custom type. What we try to do is if, if a customer, you asked about baffles, if a customer didn't want baffles, from just a production standpoint, we try to keep it at a minimum of like five trailers for an order like that. Just set up engineering to different order going through. And even if it's a more of a custom tank, usually five is the minimum to try to get it to, to be built down there. But we've done more specialized units down there when we've had, you know, Brenner's been backed up in Fond du Lac, we've moved them down there. But we primarily keep bulk for the more of a stock fleet type units, good work truck trailer. We can do everything Brenner can, does, but we try not to. We try to keep it down there just for speed. So, yeah. Is bulk cable putting pump systems on these days? Uh, you know, we don't do a lot of pump. We can do pump platforms. Um, I have not had anybody ask about doing it. They may. I just haven't anyway. Most of the time, the guys that are, unfortunately, unfortunately, do fertilizer trailers, they either have their own pumps they want to do it themselves, kind of a cost savings. Sure. Most of the guys that, most of the markets that's buying that. Um, but, if, you know, we could prep pump platform, prep hydraulics to it, you know, to try to get to that point. But I, I know we've done pump applications. We've done even high heat builds down at, uh, down at Bulk, some very high tech, high hour type trailers. So they would be able to do it if somebody really wanted to. But sometimes the way that you guys usually would order these in is more of the stock. You can add a lot of that on after the fact. And it's a non-code trailer. Fortunately or unfortunately, you guys can do what they want to it, so to speak. We don't recommend that, obviously, anything with the vessel, but that's why most of the time, if somebody wants a pump, and say, you know, we'll put a platform on, and you can take it from there, you can put your hydraulics on it. Uh, but it's a, uh, oh, it's a high quality trailer, it's a high volume trailer. And some years they sell a lot of fertilizer trailers based on the market and what the egg side is doing, but 
Can we put a bigger discharge valve on them? Can they do that at the plant? Yeah. Can we go to like a, a six inch? Yeah, we can. We a little more customized as far as but five lean, but we can. Yeah. yeah. Because somebody always wants you know something different. I mean, even the walkway, you can't do much, and you can something to pay attention to when you look at it on the trailers when it comes in the walkway. If you ever look down the side of the trailer, you're going to look at this. People always say, hey, can you put a 3 o'clock walkway? Usually the outside of the tire is going up is as far wide as you can get. So like if somebody wants a 3 o'clock, we call it a side walkway. They usually can't put it here. There's minimums that we have to do here. There's minimums for step here. Like there's usually a minimum of like 19 inches here. And obviously distance from here to here. So you're kind of caught in an envelope on some of the walkways that some of the people want to have just for safety and fall protection. You know, there's a lot of people that want to have trailers fall under the ocean. Well, we still are under, they call it a rolling stock. So it doesn't really fall under OSHA, even though people want to design walkways under OSHA. Um, and we can't do that, higher walkways, higher railings. But there's so many different configurations of railings. But as time goes on, you start to see more of that side walkway just for safety. And, uh, you know, the guys, what a lot of the shippers are doing now is they'll bring the trailer on and say, no, you guys can seal your trailer off on the street. Well, the driver's still got to get up there and seal it. It's kind of out there in no, you know, no man's land. So um, you don't see it as much on fertilizer trailers, but like on the Brenner chemical trailers and some of the bulk fertilizer trailers, fertilizer trailers, you're starting to see a little bit more. But hose tubes, troughs, most of the time these are hose tubes just due to the the slant that they're on, we do we do see some troughs, but it just doesn't work as well. It's harder too when you have a trough at a downward slant on a double conical. But kind of a simple work truck trailer for, for fertilizer. Guys, some some guys will hold def in it too. You can do that, not as preferred, but um, there's it's considered a non non code trailer. There's other products some people will haul in it, but majority that's what you see for this type of product. What's a butt weld when they weld from outside? Yeah. But, well, the center seam will usually be a single pass. At least on the, this will usually be a single pass. This will they'll do a weld, back gouge it, and weld it back on the other side. Usually on the heads, they'll do that on. It's not as critical on a non code, but chemical trailers they do for 407 to meet code. Um, and one thing you'll notice too, if you look at the head itself, it's hard to see. The chemical trailer. This is where you get a lot of the strength of the head itself. And again, we do a blank. They punch it out and they spin it, spin wind it to get to get that shape out to the side. But this is the knuckle radius, and you'll see on a lot of coated trailers, this knuckle will be a little farther out, and that gives it its added strength. I mean, it's a non-code. It's more of a free-breathing, uh, atmospheric pressure type trailer, so it's it's not as deep as what you'd see, or even the thickness that you'd see. But it does. Everything all comes into play for rollover protection, actual structural integrity of the trailers. Can bulk do things like air assist offload? Yep. These? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, we do airlines down there. We'll do vapor recovery more on the chemical side, but um, <laughs> basically anything that uh, Brenner will do at their engineering, we can do down in bulk as well. Can they create? Do they are they able to create a back out of these? Not this particular one, there's not enough rings. We do build yeah. back trailers down I'm there. I'm saying, yeah. we, can, we can build the back. Yeah, because we, we also have to, build... We have to have at least 12, 13 rings. Yeah, there'll be a 60 inch minimum uh, spacing on it, because we do build the exposed ring acid trailers, those 5,000 gallon, which we, we have on here, but it's, that, those actually are built to be vacuum capable right out of the gate. Not really to be loaded by vacuum, but vacuum capable. There's kind of a fine line. Do these that. are? These are, no. No, the, acid, the acid barrels are the vacuum capable but not really designed to be loaded by vacuum. Vacuum trailers are kind of a totally different thing, quarter inch heads, seven gauge shell, but um, we can build those down there as well. But very different from this, this type of trailer. Any other questions? That would be dangerous. You guys sell a few. I mean, Central Valley, you guys sell a lot of these, I think. 